All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, uh, I assume that you're not gonna reveal much of your lineup. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I will tell you that uh, Graves is back in the lineup tonight, though, um, after missing uh, that game. So um, good to have him back and another veteran D-man in their lineup. Um, in terms of the other D, uh, Gerard and Byram and McDonald, are they on the trip at all? Yeah, so um, – um, McDonald skated again today. He's been skating on his own and then he joined some small group stuff while we were at home and he's, he skated with the, with the group today. So, uh, that's a positive sign. I think he's getting closer to uh, a return to play. Uh, Gerard did not come on the trip and neither did Byram. So, um, Gerard is, you know, we're, we're shooting for that two week mark, give or take, uh, hopefully everything goes well with him and he can hit that mark. Um, so he'll, I would, I would expect him to start skating with our team when we get back and then uh, build up to a return to play if everything goes smoothly, but we won't know until we get back off the trip. And uh, Byram skated the other day too with the, with the small group. And he's, you know, I, I don't have a timeline on him though at all. Do you have an update or, or a, uh, a sense of what we might see from Alex Newhook He's on the trip. He's on the taxi squad. Might he play on, on on this trip at some point? Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a very good possibility that he'll play on this trip. Um, he joined our team. I wanted to let him settle in for a day here. Uh, we're going to do some video work with him. Oh, we did some already today on the penalty kill. Um, he's a guy that's been killing penalties both in college and now again with the Eagles. Done a nice job there. Um, so he saw some video this morning and worked on that out in pregame skate. I'm going to show him some five on five stuff, make sure we brush him up on how we want to play. And, um, and then we'll consider him for um, some games here later on in the trip. Peter Bob, the athletic. Hey, Jared, I hate to, to do more of these medical update questions, but did Calvert or O'Connor come on the trip? And is there any timeline with them? No, they're both out long term. Um, O'Connor had uh, surgery at the end of last week or middle of last week, so he's going to be out a while. Um, it's 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 long term. I mean, I think there's a possibility, depending on how things go, that he could be back at some point. Same thing with Calvert. He's just working through his injury. Uh, I don't have a timeline on him either. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Coach. Uh... It's got to feel good when you can have this depth like a new hook. I, I was curious more about what your thoughts are uh, on new hook. If, if you've seen him play with the Eagles uh, and uh, what, if you do play him, uh, would you, would you want his role to kind of be, uh, I guess I'm asking, and maybe as a center or winger, I don't know, but uh, just what do you kind of plug in and see with him? Yeah, well, I'll know more after I talk to him tomorrow. But I mean, he's he's a guy that that's played both special teams his whole career, um, and he's done a nice job with the Eagles in both those spots, both on the power play and in penalty kill. So I think we can use him on both of those. Um, we'll get some looks at him, some reps in practice, uh, and then we'll see if there's a spot for him to, to plug into our lineup and 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 play maybe one or if not both special teams um, center or wing, I think uh, we'll just have to see how he does, you know, like we'll, we'll get live looks at him uh, NHL reps in game. And then, and then we'll make a decision kind of moving forward, but I'd like to get him in. If we're putting him in, we want to put him into a, a situation in a position where he's, where he can succeed. Uh, obviously he's got a, a knack offensively. He's I think, what does he have five goals and nine points in eight games down there with the Eagles. So he's made an impact there in a short amount of time. So we'd like to give him the same opportunity here, play him with good players and play him up the, up the lineup a little bit. And I'm just not sure if it's going to be wing or center at this point. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, back on the road again for you guys. Uh, five games in the next eight days. Just how do you approach a stretch like this, knowing, you know, this is your last road stretch of the regular season? Well, I don't think it's any different than any other one. You know, like these are all important games for us. We're, we're trying to fight our way up the standings here and catch Vegas. Um, 
you know, we have, we have a back-to-back coming up. So we're going to see, you know, multiple goalies and, um, you know, we want to just make sure we're, we're approaching it the same way, play rested guys, play healthy guys, if guys are dinged up, they may get a night off. Um, but again, these are important games. So we're, we're out here to win uh, all of them if we can. Ryan Bolding, Mile High Sports. Hey, Jared, I was just wondering uh, if you had any thoughts about the situation in the AHL with the, the canceled playoffs and the, the Pacific Division hosting a tournament that the players may be not on board with. Um, and then also, if you're aware of any initiatives from anybody on the Avalanche to sort of support the, the AHL players, given their uh, financial situation this season. Yeah, I, I haven't talked to those guys about it. I mean, um, I was happy that they were going to play, a, uh, you know, for a little bit longer because I think we got some guys down there that can um, use that time for their development and, and get adjusted to pro hockey, just sim- similar to what Newhook has, has just done. You know, it, I think it's invaluable for him to get down there, play some games, get get into our, our system and, and um you know, get, get adjusted to the pro game. Cause it's a, it's a big step from college and he's done that well. And it, it's only taken him eight games and now he'll get a look with us here at, at some point on this trip. And I'd like to see the same thing from sample Ranta who took a little bit longer time with it, with his immigration and, and, you know, get, he's down there playing games now and, and Baron, like all these young guys coming in, I think it's real good for them to, to, to continue uh, to take the next step in, in their development and gearing up towards being able to come up here and help us play. And uh, same thing with our taxi squad guys that we've been shuffling. I think if they can keep playing, that benefits us. Um, there's, there's some value in being up with us and practicing with us and, and skating with Sean and, and being around our team. But we also want to keep guys sharp. And, and the only way to do that, or the most effective way to do that, is, is for them to have in-game reps. And um, so I, I was hoping that they're going to play. And I understand both sides of it, but I'm, I'm, I'm still hopeful that they're, they're going to do that and, and that they can get more games in down there so they're an option for us. Last one here for Jared. John Mattis, the score. Hey, Jared. I wanted to ask you quickly about the power play. So Don Skoy in that bumper spot really factored into both power play goals on Friday. I'm yeah. curious, what do you like about him in that role? And generally, what does the bumper guy do on the Avs power play? Like, what are you hoping that they accomplish out there? Yeah, so his his it's it's a you know there's multiple things that we need that guy to do and and one thing that Donnie's really good at is he's he's good at supporting the puck um, and and getting us out of tight spaces there um, in the middle of the ice you know teams will pressure you down the wall D will jump you they try to squeeze our half wall guy or flush our half wall guy and he's a, he's a release to sort of um, relieve the pressure and and get us to some open ice where we can you know get our heads up and use our skill to make plays so that's one retrievals when pucks are going to the net and they get they get sent to the corners he's he's got to be there quick to try and make sure we we keep the puck alive and, and sustain ozone ozone uh, time and continue with our pressure and, and our attack and for me one of the reasons why I really like him in there and he's both he's very good at both those aspects of the power play but one of the reasons I like him in there is because he's a right shot and, and he, he he pops into holes really well as a shooter so um Teams tend to over uh, compensate or or try to take McKinnon away on his half wall, and if you have to, you you know, Kale has to dump it back to Miko. Then he's got a shooter in there, especially if they're leaking out. And I think you saw that in in again in the San Jose game, uh, we sent it up top to Kale, and they they were stepping out and, and trying to keep the puck out of Max hands, and it opens up some space in the middle of the ice. And um, we found we went. Uh, Miko into Donnie a couple times and also Kale shot it with Donnie uh, as a tip option in the middle and Gabe in the net front we end up getting two goals that way on in the first game so I think it just gives you more options when you have a righty in there and 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 being as good as Donnie is relieving pressure for the for the other guys and helping with retrievals it's been a nice fit for us for sure all right thank you Jared all right thank you Yeah. <sighs>
right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward, Pierre Edward Belmar. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Pierre. Um, I just wanted to ask, what was your what were your emotions kind of getting in your 500th game and, and reaching that milestone? I think you're only the second French player ever to get to 500. Uh, pretty surreal, to be honest. Uh, in because before the game, uh, actually in the morning, Brendan told me, "Congrats!" I uh, kind of uh, didn't realize it, and uh, that's why when I came home, I had time to kind of think about all the different memories and kind of what it took to come in the NHL whatsoever uh, and the people and the thing that I've heard and and what it means to our country and so uh, it was pretty unbelievable obviously I'm I'm I'm, I'm proud of it uh, but uh, but it's something for our country that it's it's huge uh, for our youngsters Mike Chambers Denver Post Hey Billy could you uh talk about how you got into hockey, who influenced you, if anybody in the family, uh, and, what, and what hockey looked like in France when you were a kid? Well, I'm going to answer the last, part, last part first. It didn't look like anything. It was no hockey, to be honest. When I started hockey, you could see hockey uh, every four years for a half a game during the Olympics. Uh, so my dream was always to go to the Olympics, never to the NHL, because I had no knowledge of the NHL until I probably turned pro 17 or 18 to be honest um, before that I there was no way on tv or stuff to, to see the nhl really that much um, so hockey wasn't that existent <laughs> and then uh, uh, i started the hockey because of my big sister uh, at that time the familial situation was pretty decent and uh, she wanted to start hockey so when she started hockey my brother and i were like well we also want to go skate and uh after that hour of, uh, of free uh, session of hockey, of skating, we fell in love with it and I never quit it since then. So um, my idol growing up, obviously, because of the fact that you never was able to see hockey that much, um, was my big brother. Well, every, everything he did, I was trying to do the same thing as him. And I think that's a big part of why I became uh, better, faster, because I was playing every day in the street uh, against my brother. So as soon as he did a move, I was trying to do the same thing. And eventually I ended up playing with grown ups uh, because it was his friends. And I think that helped me be better than the, the kids of my age, I think. And after many, 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 many years of hard work, I got to the NHL. So uh, any if I can make it, trust me, everybody can make it. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Belly, this is kind of a maybe a weird question, but I saw online that you had like cookies made of your all your old jerseys uh, celebrating your 500th game. Who made those? And yeah, I guess what's the story behind those? I actually, I didn't make them. As it was uh, so uh, where we live uh, in Vegas, we have our neighbors, which is also a family friend, and we uh, she's our babysitter. And she's going to start her own company of uh, cooking, uh, of baking cookies. And so uh, she decided on her own to surprise me, which is uh, even more unbelievable because I wasn't expecting any of that from my wife. And then those my wife didn't know about that cookie surprise. So she made all of those cookies uh, from every jersey that I've, that I've put uh, since I've been going pro. So it's, uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, obviously, quite emotional when somebody that... Um, that you met a few years ago, understand kind of the story of your life and then decide on her own to, to make something that meaningful as those cookies. It's not maybe big, but it was really meaningful for me. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. I was going to mention the cookies too. They looked really good and extremely detailed. She did an incredible job. Um, hockey question for you. Obviously, you guys only have, you know, seven games left these next five on the road just how, how do you approach you know this last little road stretch that you guys have and and how do you stay in touch with uh, your family and your and your kids when you're gone for, for you know eight nine days well obviously with 2001 2021 you know the new technology uh i'm a lot on facetime <laughs> uh to talk to the family but uh, hockey wise you know since the beginning of the season we've talked about one goal and the whole team has been working towards that goal and we're still in the process of you know being better and better towards that goal so it doesn't matter there is seven or whatever the amount of goals left or where we are it's still about looking to the past game making sure that we understand the issue and and making sure that we're getting ready 
to the best of our abilities towards uh, playoff. Um, it doesn't really matter how many games or who we're playing. It's all about us uh, being better and better, a little bit, a little bit, and that our detail, details are 100%. So, yeah, that's how I feel about the hockey part. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Billy, uh, I'm looking at Hockey DB here, and it says that you went from the F French League in 2006 to a Swedish League. Yeah. Uh, it says Swedish one. I imagine that that was a lower level league, but um, yeah, second level. Could you uh, talk about that jump from it was, France? Was it huge? One day you might be able to, one day soon you might be able to read it about it in a book, but it was, it was tough. It was not easy. I came to a country that was really nice, but hockey wise, France was not really known internationally. So um, I remember telling my mom after a few, few weeks, right? I think I'd be back home at the end of, because it was a tryout contract. We were five for one spot. And eventually it was, we were fighting for 13th spot in the second league in Sweden. So um, it wasn't the easiest time, but also those times are the time that make you stronger and uh, makes me learn. Like I had to learn a different way to be, to be able to, to stay in that country. And eventually this is the way I am now, like, you know, making, make sure I make guys understand that what we're living every day is amazing. And we coming every day with a smile on your face, it shouldn't be that tough when you do the best thing you can do. Right. And this is that time in Sweden. That's what it, that's what it taught me. Uh, I realized that a lot of kids had hockey given to them and they didn't really have to work. It was a part of the culture. And when I came there, my mom told me, just make sure you make everybody understand that you have worked for that. And you're so happy to be there every day. And eventually I signed a contract not because I was the best hockey player. It was because they literally told me, like, you, your attitude is contagious. You're so positive that we want to see if you can keep doing that for another year. And so my first contract in Sweden wasn't really signed because I was good at hockey. It was more because of who I was in the locker room. And since then, it's been following me every time. So this that tough time in Sweden definitely um, helped me to become who I am now. And this is, I think, the reason why I'm in this team. And and the reason why I'm still in the NHL and I've accomplished 500 game. Um, I'm not the best hockey players, but if you give me put put the jersey on me, I'm going to try to work as hard as I can and be as positive as I can about it. We'll take one more here for Pierre. P Peter Baugh, the athletic. Yeah, Pierre, I, this is also back kind of more to the, the hockey side of things, but I wanted to ask you as, as one of the leaders on this team, what you've seen in Miko Ranton in these last couple of years and, and just kind of his development, not only as a player, but also as a leader and voice in the locker room. I mean, you want me to talk about how unfair it is that he's so good at hockey or, <laughs> cause that's the case. <laughs> like he, hockey for some of those guys, hockey, it looks like they're playing a different sport. Uh, but no, like in the locker room, you know, this season he came, like, he was so, I don't know. He's always been strong, but his, his persona in the locker room kind of developed in a way that, you know, you listen to him even more and when he talks and everything, and he's doing so much good thing on the eyes that, you know, a lot of the time, those good leaders, they just lead by example. They don't have to say a lot on the, on the locker room, just the way they play makes you want to, to follow them. And he's one of those guys. He doesn't have to, to say a bunch in, in the locker room. When he talks, you listen, but it's more about the way he plays that makes you want to, literally jump in front of any puck for that guy. Uh, and this is what you want uh, to be able to go along and play off this kind of guy for sure. All right. Thanks, Pierre. My pleasure. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche forward, Andre Burakovsky, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Andre, how's it going? Good, thanks. Good. Um, we just talked to Pierre a lot about his kind of reaching 500 games and, and his journey here. What has he meant to you as a teammate since you guys um, have come over to Colorado? Uh, no, he meant a lot. Um, he's, he's definitely one of the best teammates. Uh, he's always positive. I was sitting here listening to his interview, so how positive he was. And uh, yeah, I agree with him. He, he's always coming with a smile. He's always bringing a lot of energy to the locker room and and uh, for me, coming to to a new team, and he was new too. We kind of bonded a little bit, and because he, he was talking, he was talking perfect Swedish, and so I kind of had a conversation with him. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's really, really good and really fun to have him on the team. And he's working, he's working his bag off every day for for the team, and sacrifice himself for for the team every day. Ryan Bolding, Mile High Sports. 
Hey, Andre, I was just wondering if uh, anybody on the team is kind of pulled together to, to help with the salary situation for some of the AHL players. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I don't know about that. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Andre, I asked uh, Belly the same question. It's crazy to think that there's only, you know, seven regular season games left. The five game road stretch you guys are on last road game of the regular last road stretch of the regular season. How do you, you know, approach this? I know you've had a lot of games coming fast all season, but five games in eight days all on the road. How, how do you approach this little stretch here? No, I, I think it's kind, of, it's kind of been almost the same schedule I feel like for, for a while now. I've uh, been playing every other day for, I don't know, a long two months. So, um, I mean, in between games, you're just going to do whatever it takes to recover and get and get get ready for the next one. Um, whatever it is, treatment, um, stretching, yeah, whatever you need to get ready. I, I think it's really important to do that this time of year, especially when we have a really tight schedule the last couple of games and, and then jumping into playoff, we want to be as fresh as possible in playoff. And, but, but we're also uh, fighting for position here, so we want to be as good as we can in these last couple of games and, and get ready and win these ones uh, and then jump into the playoffs. So I think it's really important to just uh, do whatever you need to, to feel as good as possible here. And for you, I mean, being on the road for this time, you're not really allowed to go out, go to dinners, do anything. Uh, what Netflix shows are you into right now? And, and how do you stay busy on the off days when, when you're not at the rink? Uh, me and Miko, we, uh, we bought two laptops. So we, we're playing um, Call of Duty with each other every day. All right. Thank you, Andre. Appreciate it. Thank you.